Uh, so next we'll be moving on to um, item number five, monthly budget report. We want to uh, invite Deputy Superintendent Scott Jones uh, up to start that report. Do you need any support staff or you've got it? Okay. Good morning, Deputy Superintendent of Operations Scott Jones. Um, perpetually the August board meeting, since we start the fiscal year from July to June, uh, our first monthly report isn't shared with you until September because we have the lag. Uh, July is just being closed right now. The reconciliation is taking place. So you get that monthly report starting in September and then we go all the way through. Um, I'm happy to report uh, in uh, checking in the year end close process from state fiscal year 19 uh, that we're on track and on target to close on time. Um, some board members, especially those who serve on the audit committee, uh, were made aware through an audit that in previous years we've missed the deadlines for uh, submission of our package, if you will, the year end close package to state finance. Um, Deborah tells me that uh, the due date of August 2nd is still there. Now, the state finance does give us another week additionally to reconcile or come up with um, any changes or issues that take place um, as part of the overall year-end close process. Um, so for the record, the Utah State Board of Education remains fiscally uh, responsible and uh, with the ability to make all obligations, both for year-end close of state fiscal year 19 and per the, or in accordance with the availability of funds and the budgets that are set by you for state fiscal year 20, which began on July 1st, 2019. Uh, we did want to use this um, opportunity, though, for the monthly budget report to continue a effort that's going on to standardize our data. Um, man, many of the board members know that other audits, too, had pointed out significant issues with our systems. Uh, yesterday, um, our staff kicked off the Utah Schools Information Management System process. Uh, for you new board members, I can provide more details on that as we move forward together uh, through that process. But what we have an opportunity here for today is for uh, SEDS, and I'll let them, I won't steal their thunder on the uh, acronym, to come forward to you and um, offer the opportunity to present uh, where we're headed as far as data standards go. The key takeaway for all 15 of you board members is to know that you set those standards. You're the ones that we will assuredly go through and uh, make sure that uh, as we progress and our systems become more refined and we promote the interoperability that's so important uh, for uh, decision-making purposes by you and or other stakeholders in public education, that those standards will be reviewed and set by you uh, progressively uh, again as we you know, uh, incorporate um, or go live into the USIMS uh, systems. Um, the key with that, and again, it's, again, I just want to emphasize over the last two days, July 30th and July 31st, through an inclusive process, we have started uh, what was appropriated to us for the $17.2 million from last legislative session, which ultimately will result in the Utah Schools Information Management System. And no system is able to be agile or uh, form unless the data standards are clear all the way from the top down to the lowest level and those are shared and accurate and reliable uh, w within all the interoperability of the systems. Three components of USIMS, financial, educator information or data, HR type, and then the student information system. More to follow on that. Uh, so Chair, uh, if it's okay with you, could they come forward and uh, present the SEDS part uh, to you? Well, I'm not seeing any other questions. Okay, uh, about the monthly budget report. Okay. Any, do you yeah. have any questions for Super, Deputy Superintendent Scott Jones? I'm seeing none, so let, let's invite him up. Okay. Um, in your backups is the presentation they're going to give, so you have that too. And then previous to that was an EdFi presentation uh, that with going along the same theme here with the standards. Uh, so as they talk about, or you know, if it, it's brought up about the correlation between SEDS and EdFi, you at least have that background information. Again, this is just information only is to orient you for because we are in state fiscal year 20 and we were appropriated the 17.2 million dollars for USIMS. We're moving towards high quality data standards so this is information ask all the questions uh, if we don't know the answers we'll bring them back to you but it's an iterative process uh, again USIMS is going to take uh, well we estimate about three and a half years uh, from beginning to end uh, for implementation of that so if they'll come forward please so Deputy Superintendent Jones as they're coming forward let's make sure they have enough 
enough chairs, but yeah. can you can someone share the format of their presentation? Did they want to get through the presentation, yeah. save questions, make notes of it, yeah. so and what then he's, what he's asking, get board member questions, questions and comments at the end? Go, or do you want to take to the end? So. Questions as we go, it's fine. Questions as they go, Chair, if that's okay, uh, through the slides. So they'll, uh, do you know how to, yep, he's ready. He's going to post the slides up here on the, on so, the screen. So as they flag, if they have a question or a comment, I'll just kind of put my hand, Okay. finish what we're doing, and then we'll take that. Okay, thank you. Oh, here, press that right button. And it turns red, you're live. Okay. You'd think it would be green, right? If you're live, but, yeah. Make sure you introduce yourselves for the record. Yeah. If you introduce yourselves, please. Yeah. yeah. Good afternoon. My name is Bill Hennikins. I'm the director for the Center uh, for the Integration of IDA Data. Uh, before taking a role leading this center, um, I worked in the state education scene in Washington State. I was the data governance and uh, federal reporting coordinator. Uh, I saw that uh, in that role, uh, I saw firsthand the importance of uh, elected officials uh, like yourself, elected education leaders, and appreciate your time to, uh, to hear our presentation and uh, we're eager to address your questions. Uh, and who do you have with you? Hi, my name is Anna Mark and uh, I'm also with the Center for the Integration of IDEA Data. Okay, all right. So we're going to talk with you about the, uh, the Generate application and the Common Education Data Standards, CEDS. Uh, it's a free tool uh, that's available uh, via a grant that we received. And uh, there's, uh, you know, we're, we're not a vendor. Uh, we have a grant from the U.S. Department of Education to provide this uh, application and to work with state education agencies uh, to, to do data work and to do uh, USIMS work like was described uh, with, uh, with state education agencies. So uh, with that, I will turn it over to my colleague, uh, Anna Mark. She'll talk a little bit about, she'll introduce herself, provide some context to that, and uh, fill you in a little bit about uh, Generate and, uh, and we're, what we're doing. Great, so good morning. My name is Anna Mark. Um, I'm a Utah native, so I live in North Salt Lake, next to but not the same as Bountiful. Uh, <laughs> and um, I, so I grew up in the Utah school system, and I now have children in the Utah school system. So that is to say, what, what happens here matters to me on a personal level. So most of my career has been focused on research and data science, specifically to improve outcomes for students with disabilities and their families. Um, I spent some time in Washington, D.C. working for a nonprofit to do that work um, and was able through my career to see how all facets of a system have a vested interest in ensuring strong educational programs for students. So now that I have returned back to Utah, I work with Bill and we help states to have better data management systems so that they can best use data to further improve programs and outcomes for students with disabilities and their families. So CID, as we affectionately call our center, is one of the many acronyms that we'll throw at you today. Center for the Integration of IDEA Data, IDEA being the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act. So it is a, uh, it is a grant from the US Department of Education Office of Special Education Programs. And our team is the grant recipient, and so we run that. It is a five-year grant, and we're in our fifth year. So the goal of it is to work with SEAs or state education agencies to integrate their special education data with the general education data, or in other words, not keeping edu uh, special education data separate in a separate system. So we've built the tool Generate, which you'll hear about from Bill shortly, that automates the required reporting that all states are required to do up to the, uh, to the Utah, or the US Department of Education. And it frees up staff time uh, to help them focus on more important aspects of their jobs. So in order to meet our goal on CID, our team builds and shares resources and tools to help states with these efforts, and we have small teams within our team working directly with states, uh, which we hope to also be Utah, to support the improvement of data management practices and to implement the Generate tool. So an important aspect of our work is that we engage staff from all, all facets. So the diagram that you see up there just kind of breaks down what we do. Um, we engage staff from across state offices, so IT, special education, K-12, we bring them all together to review um, and improve the data management process or how the information is collected and reported because everyone that has some involvement in the process needs to do their job with the utmost fidelity and quality. 
and we want to help Utah in their de development as they move toward USIMS to improve processes and modernize Utah's data systems. And with that, I'll turn it back over to my colleague, Bill. All right. Thank you, Anna. Because it is a grant, Generate is provided free to all state education agencies. Generate's purpose is to automate and simplify uh, reporting to the Department uh, of Education under the EdFacts program. State simply request Generate through the SID website and is provided by our team, no contract, no exchange of money, no commitment. As I said, we're, we're not a vendor. Uh, Generate uh, has been developed with the federal grant dollars to help state education agencies better uh, reporting uh, with their data management activities and uh, the work that they have to undertake. States can install and implement the tool on their own uh, as every guide and document are available on our website. SID does offer free support as is standard with a grant and the benefit is that our team includes IT experts and former state employees uh, with a deep understanding of data management and systems best practices. They can teach your IT and EdFacts team uh, and staff along the way so they can run Generate on their own and it becomes a, a Utah solution uh, meeting your needs. Generate ho is hosted on servers in your local environment, not on servers for the Center for SID, not at the Department of Education. Uh, it's behind firewalls that are set up and maintained by your IT staff. Generate is accessed via web browser and is based on the common education data standards, which I'll review shortly. Generate works with any system like EdFi uh, that has validated data collected from your local education agencies. The outputs from Generate are the exact file formats needed to submit the required aggregate data to the Department of Education. There's also data needed for calculating annual performance reporting uh, for special education programs and other reports that can be used by subject matter experts, the program staff in your offices, uh, to validate and understand the data they are reporting on and working with you on. The idea is that staff will have more time to work on making data more usable for improving student outcomes as opposed to merely using data for compliance. So it's all about an effort to move from compliance to educational improvement activities. Can I, can I ask a quick question? This is just coming from me. Can, can someone give an example of how that is working or has worked internally? Do you have another state example? Give them a state example. Yeah, so, so uh, an, an example in, uh, and I'll, I'll talk about uh, Nevada a little bit later, uh, they were, to do their federal reporting, they had a contract with, it, with a vendor that they were paying, or, or you know, have been paying uh, on a regular basis, and uh, with going to the Generate solution, uh, they're saving those dollars, and they're able to uh, provide additional reports and outputs to districts uh, to, uh, to use for educational improvement practices, use to inform policy, those kinds of things. So uh, Nevada has seen okay. a direct, you know, kind of uh, budget savings that they're able to kind of reallocate those dollars to use uh, for not compliance, but for educational improvement. Deputy Superintendent Scott Jones. So, you know, board members may have been, you know, in the beginning saying, well, you know, why is this under the monthly budget report? Well, it's to this point, right, is we're looking at methodologies or processes by which we w w could result ultimately in cost savings, not only at this level, but to the LEAs as well. So we felt like it was, you know, parallel with or in support of uh, the budget, right, and, and moving forward with the data standards. So I'd just like to add that for so, clarification. So is it safe to say it just minimizes the redundancy that was yes. all over the place with different reporting requirements? Right, okay. yes. As you know, when I first took this position about four years ago, many of the LEAs came forward when I asked, what is it that we can do here, you know, to better, uh, you know, assist you as LEAs in your day-to-day -day operations. And one of the most significant requests was reduce the amount of, re of redundancy that's occurring across our sections where we're, you know, asking for the same data by one section, but then another one already has it because of the different systems, which we're trying to correlate with USIMS and do all this too, that to their point will ultimately save not only our own staff time, but LEA time as well. So we were listening and we're acting uh, in accordance with what their requests are, Chair. Okay. And Jared has some other additional information if it pleases okay. the Chair and the Board. Go ahead. Jared. Jared Felt, USB IT Director. Uh, just, just a quick example to follow up with what uh, Deputy Superintendent Scott Jones said. We have an individual that 
all he does is spend time on edfax reporting scrubbing data pulling data in from different systems and and spends hours doing that this he he almost cried when he heard about the generate tool um it will save him hours and hours of time so no, no tyler almost cried not me yeah, yeah no, tyler, tyler. Oh, i cried earlier so but it, it is a real world example of how it's going to save us a lot of time okay um, Go ahead. good example uh, Chair, if they may proceed, did you get your question answered, sir? Um, yes, but there's some other questions. Okay, go so, ahead. Yes. Uh, board member Linda Hansen. Questions beget questions. Um, and maybe this is just a dream, but um, the, this only helps the schools, right, or LEAs. It, do, it wouldn't help individual teachers because that's the concern I hear from lots of special ed teachers is that they have so much paperwork that it's, you know, that's one of the reasons that they leave as educators is because the paperwork is so daunting and so but that wouldn't this would not help with that problem right no th this is data that's come up already from from that teacher so level it's, it's a we're at a higher level yeah. than that so so we need something that's going to help that problem too not to say this isn't a great problem jared so to board member Hansen's question also, so this is part of the USBE uh, solution to report to the government. Um, we, we, as part of USIMS, that will help the teacher submission process and the overall uh, USIMS project. So there is uh, in works that will help solve that problem as well. Is it safe to also, my understanding is when this is fully functioning and everything working well, the, the redundancy that you're talking about, Board Member Hansen, of more report, more report, if we already have it in USBE, why ask for it again? And that's, that's where we're going. Um, and that's, again, what Super, Deputy Superintendent Jones was talking about is we listen to them and they, they're watching to make sure we deliver on this, but um, that, that's going to be a good when it rolls out. There's another question or comment from a board member, Earl. Yeah, thank you. Um, to say there's no cost associated with it, I mean, it, someone's paying for it somewhere, right? I mean, we are paying for it. Yeah, yeah. It's In a roundabout way, yeah. we are paying for it, right? The, yeah, through I, a federal through, grant. Okay, yes. okay. So it's not really free. It's just that it's a service that they're funding so that they can get common sta standards data sets from everyone, correct? Yes. Is that accurate? Yes. Okay. Um, and so, how many states are on board with this? Uh, I have a slide coming up shortly. Oh, okay. With a map okay. So that, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself no, that, that's here. Okay. So, okay. Yes, we will. Yeah, we'll elaborate on that. Okay. So the overall goal is to have everybody speak in the same language and to gather the same data from everyone and to have it accessible within a you know right for yes. all of our children. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. Thank you. Okay, uh, please continue. Okay, well, this slide provides you a visual representation of how Generate works. Uh, data is taken from USIMS and loaded into Generate, which resides in Utah's environment and is organized in a standard way so that when the user, Tyler in this case, uh, clicks the button to access any certain report, it is produced quickly. Access to Generate is internally controlled, so only Utah State Education Agency staff have access. Uh, this visual typically provides uh, the best understanding of what Generate is and how it works, so I don't want to move past it too quickly. I know it's been up on the screen a bit. So uh, what is important to understand is that the heart of Generate is a shared state standard, CEDS, and that Generate is controlled and operated by state staff behind your firewalls. So I don't any. This is where I had a built-in a pause for questions, but <laughs> please continue. Okay. As with any data system, uh, documentation is critical uh, so that your staff can maintain and support the application. SID makes available extensive documentation that ranges from high-level overviews to detailed instructions. Further, with each updated version, we provide uh, release notes uh, that's a standard practice in the IT uh, environment. Uh, these documents are all available on the SID website. Here's the map. <laughs> This slide provides you a representation of the list of states that have implemented Generate, those that are actively exploring implementation like Utah, and those states that have expressed an interest in Generate. Uh, as I mentioned before, your neighbors in, in Nevada deserve recognition as they were the pilot state for Generate and have now used the application for three reporting cycles. 
Kansas, New Jersey, Oklahoma, West Virginia were our first cohort of implementers, and DC Public Schools, Kentucky, Mississippi, Montana, Nebraska, and Washington are in our most recent cohort, while Michigan recently began an implementation process uh, on their own, uh, with their own resources, without our support, or at least without our direct support. We don't have staff uh, working directly with it. You will notice uh, that we are not working with any of the large population states like California, Florida, or New York. Uh, this is a deliberate choice. Uh, we are building on small successes uh, and expanding at a manageable pace. Uh, we are aiming to build a list of 10 states in, uh, in the preparing to implement category uh, that will have the opportunity to become our third cohort of implementations. And we'd like Utah to be one of those states. Finally, you'll notice that Pennsylvania is on the list. They're a larger state, uh, but they're taking a very long, like four or five year type of uh, plan to implement this, which is good for us because they're such a, a big state and it'll, it'll take a little bit different kind of work. This next set of slides highlights the development of Generate to a comprehensive federal EdFax reporting solution. Being in 2016 uh, through last year, uh, we started with the IDA files and some of the assessment files. Uh, we then added in in 2017 a number, uh, 17 additional files, and at the end of last year, uh, we completed all of the files within the application that uh, that are needed. That that Tyler, your your EdFax person here, prepares and submits uh, to the Department of Education. So what we have now is a comprehensive reporting solution for uh, for all the data through the EdFax program that needs to be submitted by state education agencies. We are not rest resting on this work. Uh, while implementation continues in states, we, uh, we have developers working on a number of efforts and exploring future opportunities. Uh, what might be most significant for your consideration is our collaboration with EdFi. We understand that you've recently approved licensing uh, for that solution. In partnership with EdFi, we are currently nearing completion of development of a connector that would allow uh, the automatic flow of data from an EdFi solution into uh, the Generate application. Uh, this will be free to you uh, with the EdFi license, making Generate a solution that complements what you're already exploring with EdFi. Nebraska, uh, in our second cohort of states uh, implementing Generate, is currently piloting uh, this work. So it also wouldn't be work that you're on the cutting edge of, if you will. Uh, Nebraska is doing that. Chair? Yes. If, if I may, so this is why it's important, too, because we presented the EdFi piece uh, a couple months back. That's why it's in your backups, too, so that you can orient yourself back to the Ed5 if you have questions about that and what the differences are or how it correlates. Uh, again, that's why the Ed5 information is in your backups as well. So, so, so bottom line, we'll, we have staff experts, IT data management experts, that will work with your staff, your experts, to between Ed5, between Generate, design a solution that meets your USIMS needs and, and the uniquenesses of, of, of your systems here in Utah. Further, we currently have developers working on diagnostic tools that will aid implementers in understanding the population of data in Degenerate. Finally, uh, we are looking to the future, uh, and we are exploring what it, would, what it would take to enable Generate to work on the cloud. While this may not be of interest to you now, it might be in the future, and it will likely be required uh, for implementation in some of those larger states. Uh, and that's important, because uh, for this solution to be an ongoing, supported by the Department of Education, we need to be able to service every state uh, if they want to. Uh, so, uh, well, that's, again, not necessarily something you would want to explore. It's, it's an important part of the application. So this covers the basic information on Generate. Uh, so we're now talk about CEDS, or the Common Education Data Standards, um, if there's no further questions. Hang on one sec. Um, board Member Earl. Okay, so help me understand. So our data, correct me if I'm wrong, we have data here. We also have data at Workforce Services that we are sending there, correct? So are you, how, what's the relationship there um, between these other entities that we're providing all the information about what's going on? What, it, what, what is the relationship with, with, um, with your entity? Because that's where our, right, that's where our state longitudinal data system yes. is residing. You got it. Yep, yep, perfect. Yeah, so th this can be, Generate can be a landing place, a longitudinal landing place for any of that data from, from early learning all the way through post-secondary and workforce data can land into the Generate application. So it has common data. 
for yes. every item. It's this isn't just special education. Correct. Then. Okay. So, yes. Chair, if I may, no. th this is a great question. You know, we are. You're right. We're focused on the IDEA piece of this, so as an example, right, for that. So, but you're right. It can expand even to that. We it just want to make sure. Yeah. That's what that is. That's right? what this is that's right here. Is. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. To, to address your question specifically, we started with a grant that's it from the uh, the office in the Department of Education that w deals with IDEA, and we're essentially expanding that with support from the department so that it's a comprehensive solution for everything that a state that your state needs to do. Follow up, board member. Yeah, so this this is a follow up. This has to do with parents' rights or individuals' rights. Oh, can a can an individual opt their information out or have it scrubbed or expunged if they don't want? their data being collected? And if so, how is that done? Yeah, my, my understanding is that even on the local level, they can, you know, go into their district or charter school and say, hey, I, you know, I want this expunged or, or not. So someone could go. They could. Come specifically for this because this is massive data, right? Yes. And say, I do yeah, not, I don't want to be in the system and. Well, so. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sure. Okay. Sure. Uh, so this is this encompasses LEA systems as well. And so EdFi, it's a data standard how systems talk to each other. So so the there would be an agreement. You know, we have an agreement with DWS or um, to share data with them. So you right. could say we don't want to share these data elements with them, or a parent could go into their local district and opt out of sharing whatever data they want with. And well, I, I I'm and I'm not the expert on this, but they. There's certain data that they have to report an LEA up to the state level, and then we have to report that through through our systems to the federal government. So, and so this this system just makes it really easy for both the federal government and any other entities that want to do research. Correct. To do that, and where does that end? What what's the cutoff point? We we know it's to birth now, but where's the cutoff point at the other end? I do not know that. Yeah. Is that 20? Yeah, yeah we'd have 30? to come back to you okay. with that. Yeah, I'd have to get with Aaron and Albert. Uh, Tay from Data and Statistics to answer that question. So I'll follow back up with you okay. on that one. Thank you. Uh, one. One key piece to this, though, too, is is that um, the data integrity that comes forward is, goes to what I said earlier. As we progress and we move together, you as the board members, especially in the EdFi realm, will be the ones to select the data elements, right? So you can also have a say in that, too. So your constituents, your parents, you know, that are in your particular districts is there's particular data elements that just are not a you know not or non-starter with them we we wouldn't make that part of the requirements to report right so from the statewide level the key is though as to jared's point is there are some uh, data elements that are necessary in order to continue funding right whether it's from the federal or the state level so th what we're trying to do here is show you the systems and the processes but I, w I cannot overemphasize the fact that you will be the decision makers on what data elements are in these systems or on these platforms or what happens to that too right and Go just ahead. an update uh, so not individual data is not sent to the federal government just aggregated right. data yeah. yes I'll go now you that's what she's getting at. We oh, sorry, ahead. I'm getting ahead. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, but we store it individually. I mean, we have individualized identifiers for the reason that we don't want John Doe to get mixed up with John B. Doe or whatever, right? right. So we, we do have, I mean, it is individualized so that we can collect data unique to that person, including where they're working, right? And they're, so, I mean, if we're going that far, I know schools don't, but we do, because we want to know whether or not you know, when you graduate from University of Utah, you actually made 60000 or $130,000 a year because that's relevant to where you... Anyway, so we, we do have that. Even though we may aggregate it to send it, it's stored disaggregated so that it can be accessed and we can track and follow. Is that accurate? That's not accurate. No. Okay. Albert Pay staff here at USB. Um, the SLDS system, that the data that we submit to UDRC is only a small subset of the data here at USB. So it's unfortunately cannot uh, generate the data that we need for AdFax reporting. And the data that's submitted to UDRC is um, how it's, how it's de-identified or PII, uh, personal identifiable information has been removed. So yes, we can track 
that individual, but we have <laughs> nobody else, no one has any idea who that individual is. They can't track my daughter, for example, the, the data that's sent to, unless you're very familiar with all the information, and they don't have all the information. So you need to be a highly unreasonable person like myself to be able to find that individual that I want to find out about. So all the data that we have is over there is de-identified. Nothing is sent to the federal government. The information that's sent to the federal government is only the FX reporting, and it's all aggregated. So everything stays in Utah, uh, USB, and UDRC. That's but about it. Are not, correct me if I'm wrong, but the information is connectable. They are logically right? linked. So, so somehow it's still saying that number one, two, three, four, five, six did this and this and this. So it's got to be connectable. Yes. It's and you're right, it might not connected. have a name with it, but it, but it probably, okay. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, board Member Lear. And I just want to make sure I understand something. This is not, this kind of stuff's not my strong suit. So I want to understand if, if at some point, and I think Scott was kind of alluding to this, but if at some point we use this system to transmit required reports or data, then if too many people opt out of certain, um, individually opt out, then we don't have complete or accurate or information to provide to the feds. Is that right? Uh, potentially, yes. So, but at this point, when you say individuals could opt out at the local level, we're, we're, you're just saying that because until it reaches a critical mass, it doesn't skew information that right. that might be re that might ac yeah. actually be the purpose of this system. Is exactly. That it could. Yeah. Potentially. And that's okay. just what we'd have to do. Is we have to just see what it is exactly that, you know, because when you look at the EdFi piece or parts of this too, we have to look at the data elements that, you know, potentially would not be a non-starter at the local level by a parent or. You know, so, to that, so. so just to follow up, to just, yeah, follow just up. to be clear, um, when you say the board decides which elements go mm -hmm. into the system, we can only decide that to the extent that it isn't, that, that, that those aren't data that we need to submit to the federal government. Is that right? I mean, we can't, we can't say, no, we don't want any right. testing data to go into the system because yeah. we're, okay, I see what you're we, we, yeah. is that, is, so yeah. it's not like we can, well, if we if we want to do reporting with this, we have to use the data, put the data in that the feds want. Is that right? Correct. And, okay. and so and, and so if there was a situation where you know that's why why we're here. We're here to to make sure that you're informed. Okay. Uh, you know to say well okay you know if you don't have this data then it could result in or may result in the fact that we're not meeting the data standards or or, or the reporting. To the Fed, or even low, you know, even for, for state reporting purposes for other programs, you know, this is why we're doing this as an iterative process and moving. You know, uh, the gentleman mentioned, you know, other states are moving slowly. You know, that's a lot of the reason why this is a lot of the reason why they're moving slowly is they want to make sure that you know it's a inclusive and productive um, process by which we arrive at and and adequately address concerns over data. You know, and what information we're being shared for, or, or how it's being shared, at what levels, by what platforms, and by what systems. But ultimately, it's about the standards themselves. What what has been made clear to us uh, through through the years and through these audits, uh, just for a quick example, uh, the the Inspector General audit from the Department of Education called into question the data that's used to comp compute the federal graduation rate. You know, and the percentage on there too. So we're just Aligning with the intent, though, to Chair Huntsman's question earlier, is how can we uh, reduce the amount of burden that we're putting on the LEAs, teachers, staff, and all that, too, on the reporting processes? That's, that's really one of the biggest goals within this whole, whole process that we've undertaken here with, with, with our LEAs and with you as the board. So. Um, board Member Bolter. Yes, I have a question. So you said that this was a federal grant data. I mean, yeah, it's a federal grant, and it's for five years, but we're at this is the fifth year. year. Yep. So if Utah were to sign on, we're at the end of the fifth year to get this grant money, 
how will that work and then what will be the ongoing cost once the grant uses up because somebody still has to pay for it the grants the initial startup right so uh, the Department of Ed has told us there there will be another grant round coming out so we'll be able to we will be able to compete for another grant that will continue to support and, and move this work forward uh, and in terms of like long-term support the once a number of states are on board with this the department uh, and through the CEDS 10-year effort that they've been supporting the department essentially becomes on the hook the Department of Education for supporting how every state or most states the what what we anticipate are doing their ed facts reporting uh, and then it provides a another way to modernize that reporting uh, right now it's a fairly archaic way that happens your staff has to like log into systems and, and there are ways that it can be done much more efficiently um, so so we'll compete for another grant and the department uh, you know, we, we fully anticipate and the discussions that uh, that they have had with state staff is that they'll continue to support this application okay but right now there's no guarantee that it will come from the federal government so if we did this we'd have to figure out a way to pay for it ourselves it, Yes, and, and, and collaboration among states is one of the things that states have talked with. Uh, so the staff, your staff, could collaborate with other states that have, have the exact same uh, common system uh, and support the, the EdFacts reporting part of it. And before, before we dive into this, before I forget, Superintendent will, or Deputy Superintendent, I'll get to you. Back, the previous board, several kind of how many years ago it was five five and a half six yeah the reason that they got into this program is not it was not solely to feed the feds information it was about creating efficiencies and simplicity for us because we are a, USBE is a small organization compared to other states and efficiency is everything and the quality of data and well the quality of that data was the other part of this too um, and that's why we got in got into this is to seek we were seeking those betterments moving moving forward um, and that's why we I, I, those were the conversations back when we decided to to take this with the the sweet spot of this is this is really good for USBE because of those two parts of efficiency and simplicity but the the next group that will really benefit from it will be our LEAs, right. and so we are in the we are in the data business. Um, we have state requirements, we have requirements to the legislature, we have requirements to ourselves to make informed decisions, and also the LEAs are wanting information too to say, okay, how am I compared? What's going on here? So we're we're in that data business, um, and so these are really good conversations. But I thought I'd just give you some background to how we got here in the in the first place so deputy superintendent Scott okay. uh, you know I really appreciate the uh, question from board member Bolter because I really would I you know I, maybe I'll just repeat the question so what if what if we don't get uh, what if they don't get the grant then the burden of the financial burden could come on us which is another reason why we uh, you know embedded this in the monthly budget report as an opportunity to do this so this is how I would address this question or that question is should that not occur then he's right you know we could cross collaborate with other states to find solutions but we bring this back to you uh, because keep in mind um, when we did the cost proposal for USIMS that we intended to do this as well e even if we didn't go the SEDS route we were going to go down that road with USIMS what this does is it's more cost effective because you know, you guys can plug yours. We're not paying for it, right? They are, right? So, but then, you know, if if the grants didn't come through, then we'd have to make an informed decision. That's that's what we do, and that's part of what why we set budgets and we do that. And that would be done uh, by my research, by the staff's research, and brought back to you if that did occur, ma'am. So, or do, or didn't occur, you know, if they didn't get the grant. So. Okay. We have an additional question or comment, board member Earl. One more question. Um, sure. Is it accurate to say that the data isn't just for reporting, that it could be used for research purposes? Is that accurate? So we're not just, it's just not reporting. This data could be used for research purposes on the national level or on local level? And, and is under the control of, of the board, yes, under the control of your staff. It's, and it's, it can be accessed by them, and yes, absolutely. Okay, if, so it's, if they want to make it available not, for that. We're just not reporting. We're, no. we're, we, yeah. 
Right. It, it, it has high payoff in that aspect as well, potentially for us to yeah. be able to do it. And it's controlled by you. You would, you would do, the board would uh, set or determine what research to conduct. And then staff would say, well, that's, this is data that we could use for that purpose, for whatever research you wanted conducted. Okay, one more question. What was the cost of the grant? What is the grant from the federal government? What is the funding? Two, two and a half million a year. Two and a half million a year? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And yeah. Chair, if I may, um, I did get already an answer to uh, Board Member Earl's earlier question about up to 20, it's up to 22 years of age. You said, for, you know. For education. Correct. Yes. Okay. Yep. Up to 22 years of age. So. Okay. Um, please, please continue. Okay. How much How much more time do we have on this? Are we getting close? Uh, I just have a, f a few more slides that I can go okay. through fairly quickly. All right. Thank so, you. So, CDS, as I've referenced several times, uh, is this 10-year-old education data management initiative that, in fact, uh, several years staff over the years that I've been involved with it have contributed to. So uh, what CDS provides is uh, essentially a standard that uh, allows uh, for education data initiatives and uh, management activities uh, to work in a more efficient uh, and uh, more, I guess, understandable way for people from the, the local agency all the way up to the department to understand the exchange and the movement of data that contains elements, definitions, option sets. Uh, it's a complete structure, if you will, uh, of data. Uh, think of it as, as an empty shell that you can fill in as much as you want uh, and use it out of the system as you want. It's just organized and defined in a common way. So it contains a series of tools uh, to, to use the data. Uh, essentially, it's a, a data dictionary tool. Uh, you can enter all your metadata into it, uh, and uh, a variety of tools align and connect to access it and to use it uh, to, to help not only with the implementation of Generate, but any other data management activities and work that you need to, uh, to conduct here in Utah. So that's, that's really it. Uh, that's, that's what we're about, um, and we'd be more than happy to work with your folks and uh, happy to address any further questions. Okay. Board Member Belknap. First of all, to Anne, I live close to, to North Salt Lake, okay? Um, anyway, um, the, my question is, is that we would have to have a module like this in USIMS anyway. So this allows, uh, um, I guess a comment question, this allows us to do this without creating one of our modules in USIMS. Yes. Correct? The chair, the answer to that yes. question is yes. Thank you. Okay. I like those kind of answers, especially with our time. No, no. I'm not saying any other, but oh, I am. Um, Board Member Bolter. Um, okay, so the statewide longitudinal data system is interoperable. Basically, it can be, our data can be shared across states and vice versa to an extent. Well, you, you could if, if that was a choice you all made. Right. Yes, that's, this, this could choice. facilitate that. So on one of your slides, um, it says common education standards. So in order for this to work, would all the states have to have the same type of education standards for math, language arts, or whatever in order mm -hmm. to share No, no. Data? It, it, the educational standards are different from data standards so okay so these are just educational data standards that yep. we would be collecting okay yep exactly your your unique standards of of testing or whatever can can land into the system uh and and but you know they can be whatever you define so if if i may elaborate a little bit uh i taught in college for for 13 years one of the things when you build anything, for example, last name, my last name is only three characters. And so to make it standard, we have put it standardized in a database, says 25 characters for last name. But if you meet a Polynesian, that would not fit in there. And so what they're trying to do is, uh, this standard says, okay, for last name, we have put it as 25 characters. First name, we will have 30. I, I have a friend who's, Last name means uh, Joseph in a boat full of dirty women, you know. And that's translated <laughs> from Tongan. And uh, you will never be able to fit into that 25 character. And so what we're trying to do is establish a standard for each few gender. We have put, you know, the number of characters we want in there. And so that, you know, if we want to share, especially with the different 
SIS or school information systems they have, if they have different standards, you can't share. It's like apple and oranges. You can't share. It. So this allows us a common platform uh, with all the various fields being standardized. Mail is represented by M and not M-A-L-E. And so everybody is all standardized. And that's what they mean by CEDS. Okay. Okay, Board Member Earl. Sorry, what? Two more questions. So this is relevant to how many data points do we currently have? Did this does the seeds have it that they can collect? What what's the dictionary look like? Uh, it's it's over eighteen hundred elements in the con in the CDS standard. Okay, and does it also collect biometric? Um, so if is there is there standards for that too? Not to my understanding. I, I, would, I don't know all 1,800 elements, but I have not, in, and I've been involved in this. Even so where can we find that dictionary? Where can you find that? it? Mm -hmm. uh, CEDS.ed.gov. I'll, okay. I'll provide the, the, the link. CEDS.edu, or .ed, I'm sorry, .ed.gov. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm not, I'm not seeing any more. Oh, you speak to that, Chair. you're going to speak to... All right, you can, might get your answer sooner than you might not have to look that up. Am I on? <laughs> Thank you. Um, Chuma Uzo, Assistant IT Director. Um, yeah, I've, I've looked at the uh, set standard. Um, there's no biometric uh, elements in the set standard, but the set standard is publicly available, and you can find it on the CEDS site. There is a data dictionary there. You'll be able to see um, what elements are there. Um, to, to add to that, like uh, they've been saying, these are the boards. If the board wants to adopt certain ones, we can. If we want to adopt other elements, we, we don't, you know, we can pick and choose what we want to do. And this goes hand in hand with the, uh, the EDFI uh, piece as far as the EDFI data. So thank you. Okay. All right. Um, thank you for your presentation. Now when we hear Sid, um, we'll... It'll be the, the Sid with the C instead of the S, right? But we'll still jump when we hear, no we won't, <laughs> uh, when we get emails from Sid. All right. <laughs>